BibleChristian.org. Hello, this is Gary Pinnell, and we would like to start a new book today in the Bible, which is Luke chapter 1, and it's a long one, <laughs> but a good one. Uh, Luke 1 has 80 verses altogether. So let's have a short introduction for the book, and then we'll get started right away. So I welcome you to our study. Thank you so much that you've been with us, uh, some of you, for maybe a couple years, because we have been going for two years, going through the New Testament. But Lord willing, uh, we have done a little bit of the Old Testament. Lord willing, next year we'll be in the Old Testament so i encourage you to have a daily bible reading start on today's date and a year you'll have finished it don't wait till january okay so just a little bit of encouragement there and i will show you for today that we uh, are in second samuel ecclesiastes chapter one luke one and zechariah chapter one and the daily bible reading so a lot of times I don't share that again through the month, maybe once or twice. But the, so you'll just know where we're at. Also, you can go on to BibleChristian.org and we uh, put in daily Bible reading charts and I have many of those. So that's just one of them. I like this one. Uh, but the thing is that uh, Luke was a Gentile. He's the only Gentile he, that wrote scripture, allowed to write scripture. He's a doctor, so he did a lot of research. And um, he went and interviewed all of the apostles. He had interviewed uh, Mary, Jesus' mother. And he had time to do that when Paul was in jail in Caesarea and Philippi and then also in uh, Rome because he traveled with Paul and wherever it says like in Acts we that was Paul was with them now in Luke uh, you have a picture in Ezekiel of the four living creatures and Revelation you have a picture of the four living creatures and this is uh, what God has done all of scripture is perfect and there is wonderful, wonderful uh, illustrations. And one of the illustrations that God has used in the Gospels is that of the heads of the four living creatures, which seems kind of strange, but they have, you have Matthew as the lion of the tribe of Judah. Uh, and then Matthew, Mark is the servant, the ox, uh, the oxen then luke is jesus the perfect man and these four heads of the living creatures are in uh like i said ezekiel and also revelation but then also you have and the last one matthew mark luke john okay and then you'll have john is the eagle and the head of the eagle and Ezekiel. The eagle flies up above um, and sees everything. The eagle eyes, you've heard in so on. But uh, God is all knowing. God is, uh, and so Jesus is. I am. And uh, the book of John, he is the eagle. And uh, in other words, of the four living heads and of the creatures, all right? So, but as you go through scripture, you're gonna find there's many, many amazing things to study into. There, we never get to the bottom of it. It's just more and more every day. Now, so we're gonna start with Luke chapter one, and he gives in both the book of Luke and also Acts, which he wrote as well. He gives a little summary introduction about how that he has put this in chronological order. And what do you mean by that? Well, 
in Luke and in Acts, there's a chronology that is really, really accurate, completely accurate. Now, does that mean that he covers all the subjects like in Matthew? No, because Matthew is talking about the king. And uh, so when he goes, he goes into the things about Jesus as the perfect man and Luke. Uh, so everything that he covers, though, is in chronological order. But you have to go back to the other Gospels to see things that he has left out. The Holy Spirit had him leave out on purpose. Not that he didn't know about it, because certainly he did. But right now, so we'll explain that as we go along. Let's go ahead and get started. This first chapter, like I said, is... 80 verses and so we're going to need to move right along it says inasmuch as many have taken in hand to set in order a narrative of those things which have been fulfilled among us so the prophecies that that, that were given and fulfilled through jesus just as those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses, the apostles that were with Jesus, their, <laughs> uh, their wife was with them, by the way, when they got married, and their children as they raised those. But we, very seldom do they talk about them. They talk about them some. Uh, but, okay, verse 2. Just as those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word delivered them to us. So the word of God came through these apostles to us. It seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first, because he's, inter he's interviewed Mary. He's interviewed... Now, Joseph, Mary's uh, husband, had passed away by that time. But he had interviewed the 12 apostles, except for Judas, of course, who committed suicide. But the others he interviewed. And understanding of all things from the very first, to write you an orderly account, most excellent Theopolis. Now this was a, a like a, a ruler that in those days they would uh, if they had something to show something to tell they would give it to the king or the ruler in this place in this case and they would look it over and see if it were true so we're not spreading some false information hello Esther the Lord bless you sister yes happy Sunday, and uh, we're in verse 3 of Luke. And he said, It seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding, as Luke had interviewed Mary, as he had interviewed all the living apostles and uh, others, to find out exactly what had happened. And so because he was really uh, giving a narrative of the things that Jesus said and did, he is allowed to write scripture, even though Luke was a Gentile. But in one sense, he had really been with Jesus because of all of the information that he had acquired. Now, the Holy Spirit took what he had and had him write down exactly what we need. So, as we talked about earlier, each one of the Gospels, uh, they're not contradictory, they're complementary. They do not con uh, contradict each other. They are showing the different themes. And we said Matthew is Jesus as Messiah King. Uh, Mark is Jesus as the shepherd, uh, as a servant, excuse me, as a servant. And... And he is serving there. In Luke, he's the perfect man. 
you know, all these cartoons or things that, uh, movies that Superman and, and, uh, all just, uh, all different types of heroes, Superwoman and on and on it goes. Uh, they are, when they talk about the person being, uh, uh, doing good and so on, well, where do you think they got this idea from? Well, Jesus, because he was the super person, the superhuman. But he could still suffer pain. Uh, he could still get hungry. He could get tired, uh, just like us. And he was in every way like us. It seemed uh, so he, Paul, or Paul and uh, Luke, in this case, is writing to... The king and it's being uh, looked at by the leader there. That you may know the certainty of those things in which you were instructed. So he's being told about it. And so he can look at it over carefully. And any other books that were written that do not agree with this would be counterfeit but this is god's word verse 5 there was in the days of herod the king of judea a certain priest named zacharias of the division of abijah his wife was of the daughters of aaron and her name was elizabeth so this goes they go all the way back their genealogy does to Aaron, the first high priest, the first priest that God appointed the brother of Moses. So, uh, Zacharias uh, is definitely one of the priests, and he's elderly, okay? And he doesn't, his wife doesn't have, they don't have any children, verse 6. But they've been praying for children. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. Now, even though the commandments did not save you in the Old Testament, you were supposed to keep them after you were saved and to live a righteous life like that. Verse 7, But they had no child. And the way it's said here, it really emphasizes it very clearly because that's very important. Because Elizabeth was barren. In those days, if you didn't have any children, they thought of you as cursed of God. And they were both well advanced in years. So it was that while he was serving as priest before God in the order of his division, According to the custom of the priest, his lot fell to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. So every priest had their responsibility, and they drew, like we would say, drew straws. They, uh, paper, rock, scissors. They had a little way that they uh, chose, and it was... uh, by, um, it seemed like it was by chance, but of course with God, even the things that seem as chance are not chance. It was ordained of God. And the whole multitude of the people was praying, multitude was praying outside at the hour of incense. So they had uh, three times that they prayed, the hour of incense, That is where between the holy place and the holy of holies where they burn the incense, which is a picture of prayer and praise. Verse 11. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him standing on the right side of the altar of incense. So an angel was sent. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your prayer is heard, 
and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John. Now, they knew about a, uh, Abraham and not being able to have children and how God blessed him. Uh, they knew about Samuel. They knew about Samson. They knew about all of these people from the Old Testament. And so they should have been believing. And uh, verse 14, And you will have joy and uh, the gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord, John the Baptist, and shall bring... Uh, shall ne drink neither wine nor strong drink. He's not going to uh, drink anything that is fermented. So he's not even going to drink uh, grape juice. Uh, he will also be filled with the Holy Spirit even from his mother's womb. Now that seems interesting, doesn't it? That he's going to be filled with the Holy Spirit before he's even born. Can God do that if he wants to do it? Yes, he can. And he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. So they're going to get right through him. He's going to be a great evangelist. He will also go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah. Now, it doesn't say he will be Elijah, but he will be in the spirit and power of Elijah which was to prepare people's hearts before the Messiah came, to turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just. So fathers would uh, turn to being doing the responsibility they're supposed to be doing with their children. The children will be obeying the parents and everything will be made right uh, through him, those people that follow John the Baptist, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And so today people, uh, leaders, they have the roads fixed and uh, the water running and everything went before they come. Uh, the Everything is going good. They want it to look good as they go there. At least they used to do that. But here, uh, it's people's hearts that God is preparing before Jesus comes, the Messiah. And Zacharias said to the angel, how shall I know this? Oh, 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 careful here. You're talking to an angel, bud. All right. For I am an old man. And my wife is well advanced in years. In other words, uh, no way she can have a baby. <clears throat> We're too old. And we can't have any children. Oh, oh, you're forgetting about Abraham. You're forgetting about Samson. You're forgetting about Ruth and uh, Boaz and all these people. Okay. And the angel answered and said to him, I am Gabriel. All right, so he gives his name. It uh, seems like he is emotionally, uh, of course he knew that he was going to, that Zacharias was going to do this, but he's coming out really strong here, isn't he? And I believe that angels have mind, will, and emotion just like we do. Uh, he says, but they're in uh, a perfect state, and uh, we're not at this point. And so he can be angry and say, not, I am Gabriel, who stands in the presence of God, and was sent to speak to you and bring you these glad tidings. In other words, this is good news, fella. Come on, what's going on here? But behold, you will be mute. You're not going to speak and not able to speak. Okay, until the day 
these things take place because you did not believe my words which will be fulfilled in their own time. All right, so should we be believing the word of God as it's taught to us? Uh, he is being held accountable here, Zacharias is, because he didn't believe the angel's word, which was a holy angel. And we need to believe God's word. Revelation was given uh, through angels and to John. And we need to believe all of God's word. Verse 21, And the people waited for Zacharias and marveled that he lingered so long in the temple. All right, he was thinking about what can I say because I, I can't speak to the people. I'm going to have to use a, a sign language, you know. And uh, they didn't have organized sign language yet, but, uh, you you know, you can make things up with your hands and so on. And so he's getting ready to go out. Uh, but when he came out, he could not speak to them, and they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple, for he beckoned to them and remained speechless. So he did the best he could. They figured it out. He saw a vision. So I mean, he was speechless. So it was as soon as the days of his service were completed, so he couldn't talk the rest of that time, just did the best he could, that he departed to his own house. Now, after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived. Praise God, just exactly like he said, just exactly like God told uh, Abraham's wife, Sarah. Okay, and uh, she conceived when she was 90 years old. And so Elizabeth was old. And she hid herself <laughs> five months, saying, Thus the Lord has dealt with me in the days when he looked on me to take away my reproach among people. Now, Zacharias had written out the information, I'm sure, to her, because later on they have a pad. He does a lot of writing during this time. Uh, he's got nine months. Now, in the sixth month, the angel uh, Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth. So it seems that this is one of Gabriel's responsibilities is telling people good news that's going to come to them. To a virgin, that's very important. She is very young, probably maybe 12 to 14 years old. To a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph. And Joseph, we believe, was older. And they were going to get married. And they married the girls off. They were pretty young in those days. Uh, Judy, the Lord bless you, sister. Uh, whose name was Joseph of the house of David. Okay. So Mary is actually where... The uh, Jesus, and we're going to see that in the um, genealogy that is Jesus uh, from Adam came through the line of Mary. Both were in the kingly line, but uh, Joseph's line, he could only adopt uh, Jesus, but the thing is, because he was not really the father, God is the father, but he also, his line has, was corrupted and would not, you could not have uh, the king through him. But through Mary, uh, she could have the child, okay? So there, the sin nature is not passed on uh, because uh, the sin nature is passed on through the man. But so Mary is a virgin. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored. 
One, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. And again, I believe angels have mind, will, and emotion. They're not like some robots or something. And so you have an exclamation mark there. But when she saw him, uh, she was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. That means uh, Joshua. And... Uh, in Savior. Uh, he will be great and will be called the Son of the Highest because he is the Son of the Highest and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. So we know about the thousand years but once uh, Satan and his angels, as we looked at in Revelation, are cast into hell, the lake of fire forever. Then the kingdom goes on that Jesus started for a, that went for a thousand years after those that are judged. And it just continues on forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I do not know a man? No. Uh, she's not doubting. She's just asking uh, how it can take place because they, uh, even at that time, of course, they knew how children were born. And this is not the normal method uh, because she's a virgin. And the angel answered. And by the way, they were just, they spent time together uh, and as she was engaged, but she was not married. In verse 35, And the angel answered to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you. Did they know about the Holy Spirit? Oh, yes. And the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that Holy One who is born will be called the Son of God. What happened in the day of creation at the beginning in Genesis? The uh, Holy Spirit was hovering over and having a part in creation. So now the Jesus will be born uh, through by the power of all three in the Holy Trinity. And Jesus will become an uh, embryo in uh, Mary. Uh, and so, but he will be totally God then and totally man. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. For with God, nothing will be impossible. Amen. He can do everything. There is nothing too hard for God. He uh, rules over the universe of atoms and molecules and everything is under his control. Then Mary said, Behold, the maid servant of your Lord. So she just, okay, uh, whatever you want, that's what I want. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Don't you like Mary, uh, her, even though she's young, 12 to 14 year old in there, she is still just sold out to the Lord. No matter what God wants, that's what she wants. No matter what he says, she believes it. Are we like that? Now Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste to the city of Ju Judah and entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. So Mary uh, acted then. And it happened when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary that the babe leaped in her womb. It's like uh, we're finding out more and more that little babies inside the womb, they uh, hear things. They sense things. And here, uh, 
when Mary greets Elizabeth, that, that uh, the uh, babe leaped in her womb. Okay, so uh, Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, John the Baptist was filled with the Holy Spirit. Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Mary, as she came in, came in, she was filled with the Holy Spirit. Then she spoke out with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. So this is what Mary, I mean Elizabeth, is saying to Mary. But why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? So she knows in the Holy Spirit that Jesus is the Messiah, that he is the King of kings, Lord of lords, the one that is dwelling inside right now, inside Mary. For indeed, as soon as the voice of your greeting sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. So John the Baptist was, <laughs> oh, he was excited right inside of <laughs> Elizabeth. Blessed is she who believed, for there will be fulfillment of those things which were told her from the Lord. So Elizabeth is saying that. Uh, he, she knows in the spirit uh, what has happened to Mary and uh, says those things Elizabeth does. Now Mary says, uh, as she's filled by the Holy Spirit, and Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior, for he has regarded the lowly state of his maidservant. I'm just a young girl. Okay, for behold, hence all forth all generations will call me blessed and we do we are uh, we don't worship mary but we venerate her and are very glad and thankful for her without her um, the the lord did this miracle through her for he who is mighty has done great things for me and god blesses men and women this and different ways, but he still blesses both. Okay, great things for me, and holy is his name. You see how she worships God, and his mercy is on those who fear him. And by the way, this is the the Holy Spirit is speaking through her, and uh, I, it's interesting to see sometimes and kind of disheartening people say. Oh, they must have been very smart and they thought about these things. No, no, the Holy Spirit spoke through them. And then uh, Luke is able to write down uh, what he was told, exactly what they said. From generation to generation, he has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts just like Satan's proud and thinks he's going to win against Jesus. He's not. He has put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted the lowly. So all the kings throughout history, um, he's done that, just pulled them down when they're finished, when he's ready to pull them down. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. Uh, you think, oh, God is not going to take care of me? Yes, he will take care of you. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his seed forever. People get the understand, please. God's word is perfect. Everything that is said in there is going to be fulfilled everything in the old testament everything in the new testament and mary remained with her about three months so she's about ready to have the baby and return to her house now elizabeth's full time came for her to be delivered and she brought forth a son 
when her neighbors and relatives heard how the Lord had shown great mercy to her, they rejoiced with her. And she was so old, but she's still having a son. So it was on the eighth day, which is when they circumcised the child, uh, that they came to circumcise the child, and they would have called him by the name of his father, Zacharias. His mother answered and said, No, he shall be called John. Good for her. She is... Uh, doing what God had told her to do. But they said to her, there is a, a, a no one among your relatives who is called by this name. So they made signs to his father what he would have him called. And he asked for a writing tablet and wrote saying his name is John. So he's already named before he is ever born. Same thing with Jesus, same thing with you. Okay, so they all marveled. Immediately his mouth was open and his tongue loosed. Okay, Zacharias, that, that man is ready for the filling of the Holy Spirit. He's ready to speak out the words of God. And he spoke praising God. Can you imagine the emotion, the excitement? Then fear came on all who dwelled around them. And all these sayings were discussed throughout all the whole country of Judea. Now, this happened for quite a while. Of course, 30 years go by till Jesus actually comes to his ministry. Um, and all those who heard the uh, these, okay, heard them, sorry, kept them in their hearts, saying, what kind of child would this be? And the hand of the Lord was with him. Now his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, saying, Blessed is the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets, who have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. Now, you, those people out there that want to attack Israel and have since they came back as a nation in, <clears throat> in 1948. And this is the uh, way it's been, <coughs> excuse me, down to this day. And to this very day, uh, they're fighting against Israel. I've got news for you. I don't care if the whole world fights against Israel. They're not going to defeat. Or de, they're not going to defeat Israel, and just take God's word. He is very clear in His word, and that is: if the sun stops shining, the moon doesn't give its light, then God will forget Israel. He's not going to forget Israel. He's taking care of it, so we don't have to worry. Uh, yes, we should bless Israel and help them, because there's only a hundred and. I don't know, I think 190 some nations all together and 140 have already decided that they are uh, against Israel. Too bad because your nation's going to be cursed. All right. And the nations that turn and uh, bless Israel, they're going to be blessed. God says in his word in Genesis, uh, the descendants of Abraham, those uh, that curse you will be cursed. Those who bless these uh, Israelites will be blessed. I'm going to bless the Israelites, aren't you? And that's what it's talking about here. All those that have tried through the years to destroy Israel. It's like trying to destroy the Word of God. You're not going to be able to totally destroy them. And the oath which he swore to our father Abraham 
to grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear and holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And that is coming uh, in the future when they accept Jesus as their Messiah. That is going to take place. And you, child, little Jesus there, eight days old, will be called the prophet of the highest. For you, Moses said, uh, there's a prophet coming like myself. Listen to him. But he's not just a prophet. He's more than a prophet. For you will go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways. Uh, sorry, I, I misspoke there. and I want to get back to... Okay, so this is little... Um, John the Baptist right now, uh, eight days old. Okay, and so if uh, Mary has gone back uh, to where she was in Bethlehem, and uh, Elizabeth and John are here, and a uh, little baby uh, John is the one that we're talking about now. So let's go back and make sure we we understand that. I don't want to get that wrong there. Okay. Uh, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham to grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. Okay, so now we go to this child, which is John the Baptist, okay, eight days old, will be called the prophet of the highest. So he's going to be a prophet as well. And Moses uh, did speak about Jesus, and he would be the prophet. Uh, but also, there was a prophet that would come before Jesus. All right, before the Messiah. For you will go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways. Speaking to little John the Baptist, eight days old <laughs> to give the knowledge of salvation to his people by the remission of their sins through the tender mercy of our God. And so John the Baptist had a ministry of repentance. People were getting right with the Lord and then being baptized with which the day spring from on high has visited us to give light to those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. And that's what Jesus does. So the child grew, it's little John the Baptist, and became strong in spirit and was in the deserts till the day of his manifestation to Israel. Praise the Lord. Thank God for his word. Let's go to prayer. God, we thank you for your word. Thank you that you are holy and just and you're perfect in all your ways. Thank you that you've given us the record of what took place exactly. It's not guesswork. It's not been corrupted through the years. As someone was trying to say last night, a religious leader. But no, it is perfect in all of its writings thank you father pray now that you'll oh, bless israel the that you will just help them through these wars that they have to go through pray that you'll help us to bless them as a nation and pray now too father for those who are suffering for you around the earth we just yield them into your hands thank you that you will help them and make us a blessing as we go into the world to share this good news with others. We pray all these things with thanksgiving in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Now the Lord bless you, brothers and sisters in Christ. And we'll see you, God willing, tomorrow. Shalom, Pastor Emmanuel. The Lord bless you, folks.